So in today's show, we're going to take a deeper dive into collagen production and talk about ways to support the health of your hair, skin, nails, and joints as you age and talk about the under-recognized importance of blood sugar and metabolic health. Now, I was, to be honest, not really made aware of this intimate connection between age-related changes in hair, skin, nails, and the links with hyperglycemia and poor metabolic health until this paper just came across my feed a few days ago. And we're going to break this down and talk about all the details here and the practical takeaways and assessment modalities that you can implement at home and in your life to see if you might have acceleration, unfortunately, in the loss of elasticity and collagen in your hair, skin, nails, and joints that can predispose you to joint issues, reduce mobility, rupture of tendons, uh, more wrinkles in the skin, hair loss, and weakened uh, nails. The title of the paper is Effects of Diabetes on Tendon Structure and Function, Not Limited to uh, Collagen Cross-Linking. Now, again, I think this is really important because everywhere you go, you see hair salons, uh, skincare clinics, there's Botox, there's Juvederm. Some of the top selling supplements at most natural food stores and whole foods are collagen peptides and collagen related uh, supportive products. There's bone broths. There's all these different things. And I'm not, you know, saying never consider any of these things whatsoever. However, as we're going to talk about the science here, if you have hyperglycemia and you have poor metabolic health, Good luck trying to support the elasticity in your skin and you know have less visible wrinkles and thickened hair and thickened nails if you're eating hyperpalatable processed foods and have hyperglycemia because the data is quite clear. Again, from this paper and other articles that we're going to talk about today, elevated levels of blood sugar and poor metabolic health in general creates a formation of advanced glycation end products within the collagen matrix. And again, this weakens tendons, this actually thickens the tendons, makes them more calcified, more prone to rupture, and this weakens the elasticity and causes more wrinkling of the skin. So if you're just providing the precursors for more collagen, but at the cellular level, you have these molecular changes that are, again, preventable and malleable, and that we can assess to see if you might be more susceptible to these cellular and molecular changes. But there's changes in genetic uh, levels of different genes and inflammatory byproducts and changes in the stem cells within the collagen that probably are not going to be circumvented by just up, you know, adding more collagen peptides and bone broth into the mix. Okay, so we need to focus on the root cause here. And the root cause, it seems that, this literature is showing, as we age, age age-related changes uh, are accelerated by the formation of glycated collagen. Now, you've heard about glycation before because we've talked about the hemoglobin A1C test. This is a a very easy test that you can do, and I recommend all my clients that I work with either get an at-home meter from BioCoach, I'll link it below, you can use the code HIH10 to save, or when they go to their doctor and you do your standard physical, you do your Chem24 and CBC and differential, these are all the tests that we recommend over at our website, highintensityhealth.com, you can download the blood work cheat sheet. On that page, the hemoglobin A1C test, the triglycerides, the liver enzymes, will give you a good idea and a good snapshot into your overall metabolic health. Now, if your hemoglobin A1C is elevated, then that probably means that the collagen peptides within your joints, within your skin, in your hair and nails might also be glycated because again, what the hemoglobin A1C is assessing is the degree of glycation on your red blood cells. It's quantifying that. So if if your red blood cells are being glycated and sugar is being attached to them because you don't exercise enough, you have poor circadian rhythms, you're not walking after meals, you're eating too many carbohydrates for your exercise output, then your joints are going to be compromised as a result. Your skin might show acceleration of wrinkles as you age. And and we're going to really talk more about this. So important stuff, but I want to drill down on the mechanisms here. I want to show you some of these images so that when you see cheesecake, When you have the option to have a soda pop versus water, you're going to think, I don't want my skin to look like hell when I'm in my 60s or 70s, or I don't want to rupture my Achilles tendon, because it turns out there's actually a lot of research on Achilles tendon rupture in pre-diabetics and diabetics. And actually, I want to read to you a quote here. What's interesting is about 80% of the individuals attending outpatient physical therapy have pre-diabetes, diabetes, or some diabetes risk factors. Now, you might say, well, Mike, 80% of the adult population has some poor metabolic health. Yes, but the super majority of people, 
that go to physical therapists because they have hip pain, back pain, shoulder pain, joint pain, wrist pain, you fill in the blank pain. That could be linked to everything that we're talking about today. And the changes at the cellular level within collagen production and the, the stem cell generation and also the, the disorganization within collagen as a result of poor metabolic health. So I thought that was quite interesting. Now, the authors go on to say, Diabetes affects collagen sliding and disorganization of collagen within tendons, hair, skin, nails, and much worse. So it turns out there's a strong connection here within the tendons of the, the lower extremities. The patellar tendon, Achilles tendon, has been readily studied in diabetics. And a, 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 there's a huge proportion of people that rupture their Achilles tendon tend to have a lot of diabetes risk factors and poor metabolic health issues. So it's not just a collagen deficiency. Okay, look, our sister company, Myoscience, we sell collagen. It's one of the best collagens out there. Uh, it, fut it futures a lot of unique collagen peptides that are synthesized over in Europe and futuring European-derived you know, bovine uh, products and so forth, raw materials. Great product. But if you're eating processed food, I, you're, you're kind of wasting your money. You really need to be doing everything right in order to get the most benefits there because what if you're just ingesting this collagen then it's going to get glycated and not going to help you out? So it has to do with the metabolic health of the system. So as you can see here in figure four, the changes in skin elasticity start, they start to be noticeable around the age of 35. So what you see here is 67, I'm sorry, 76 type 2 diabetics compared to 77 controls. And there's these different quantifiable ways to look at skin elasticity. And as you see here, starting at age 35, there is a statistically significant difference uh, in the loss of elasticity in people who have diabetes. Now, this gets even more pronounced once people hit the age of 55 or around 50. And so look, you can get away with a lot of stuff when you're young, but it starts to show up when you get into your 40s and 50s. And so that's why I'm encouraging all of you to do the, the stuff now, do the work now, so that when you are older, people come to you and say, hey, what are you doing? I, wanna, I don't know what you're doing, but it's working and tell me more, right? So we want to be exemplars of healthy living. We want to be, we don't just wanna talk about the science and the biochemistry, we want to live this, to embrace it, to be the change that we want to see in the world, to, to discourage people to have dinner at, at the CVS or Walgreens or Chick-fil-A or McDonald's. We want to be consuming healthy, real food. And so again, you see this as well, uh, this elasticity index over here in, in both of these images. So we're going to continue on and talk more about how poor blood sugar health affects the collagen organization, the specific futures and ways that you can assess this. But first, I want to welcome you all back. It's Mike Mutzel. As always, thank you for being here. If you're enjoying this content, please do a few things. Share this directly with a friend. Send this, as, whether on iTunes or uh, YouTube, in a text message to, hey, check out this video. I think you might want to uh, apply some of the practical tips that you're going to learn here. Also, links for the information that we're talking about, the show notes, and also the research are going to be linked below. Also, my friends, you know I'm all about exercise, improving blood sugar health. Part of that is by exercising more, having a better workout. So one of the things that we've, we've done here is created the electrolyte sticks that futures red mineral salt, creatine, taurine, magnesium, potassium, calcium. It's an amazing formula. It will help you have a better workout, better recovery. Staying hydrated is important for skin health as well. Use the coupon code podcast to save. I'll put links below, my friends. You can read, there's close to 200 reviews just in the last 60 days on that formulation. People really dig it. Intro workout, pre-workout, it works phenomenally. So let's continue on here and talk about how, what the advanced glycation end products are, these so-called ages, why they're problematic, and what they specifically do to your tendons and the collagen peptides that comprise your tendons, your hair, skin, nails. So basically, an advanced glycation end product is when uh, you know whether it's fructosylation, ribosylation, or glucose is attaching to proteins, and that actually changes the structure of the protein. So if your collagen peptides in your body, in your hair, skin, nails, joints, are having a lot of glucose attached to them, remember in biology, really important that you know this, okay? Structure equals function. This, this happens in your house too. Go, go take a sledgehammer to your foundation. You're, you're gonna start to notice tilting in your house or settling. If you put a lot of water along your foundation, your house is gonna settle. The changes in the structure will change the function of your house. You, you might start to notice more air coming through, more mold, uh, there, you know, things are gonna be wobbly, right? So structure equals function. And so when you change the structure 
of the proteins in your body, you change the function. And so that this is what happens here. So when your when your collagen peptides get glycated, uh, the the collagen fibrils, this leads to a reduction in the elasticity. And so we just showed sh I just shared with you on Figure Four of that paper that the elasticity changes are observable. At, starting at age 35, but they become even more observable, uh, and there's a, the delta there is, is more pronounced in, in 60s and beyond. And so what happens is you see a loss of elasticity, but you also see thickening of tendons, and that leads them to more likely to rupture, and there's more inhibited movement. So how many people do you know that say, like, I have a hard time just standing up, or I would work out, but my knees hurt? Here's just a little fun fact. When you lose weight... The, the, your uh, osteoarthritis in the hands and, the, and the, the knees actually gets better. It's not just from the weight loss. It's from changes in the inflammatory milieu. When you reduce leptin, that actually improves osteoarthritis in the hands and the, the joints in the lower extremities as well. So inflammation and advanced glycation end products are part and parcel with joint pain and reduced mobility. So that's important. But when we're encouraging people to exercise, we don't want them to just rupture a tendon, right? So this is why we also need to work on the diet and make sure that when people are exercising, they're not also having you know, processed foods and refined sugar. Now, you might say, well, what is a tendon and how do tendons have to do with hair, skin, nails, and collagen? Well, essentially what tendons are is parallel uh lots of, of parallel structures of collagen that, that are basically parallel layers of collagen molecules. And again, if these molecules start to get glycated, then it makes the tendon lose its elasticity. And then it's more likely to rupture and then more likely to lead to joint pain and reduce mobility. And so what's important with the collagen peptides and in tendons and also in the skin is that these collagen uh, parallel fibers can move. They can sort of glide and slide during movement. Uh, and when they're glycated, that doesn't work. There's no gliding and sliding. And so everything gets stiff. And again, you don't want that, right? And and how many of us notice as we get older, we start to notice this anyway a little bit. And also, lest I remind you, when you get older, your blood sugar control actually gets worse and worse. So this is why you need to be even more vigilant about this. This is why, like, hey, if you used to have ice cream every night, now it's like once a week or once every couple of weeks. This is a treat. You could get away with that stuff when you were a kid because you were so active, but you're driving to work instead of walking to school as a kid, right? So we need to be very mindful of that. And so... I think figure one really uh, from this paper kind of conveys the message here and what's going on and why we should lower the sugar intake in our diet. Walk after meals, post-meal walking is so great to just balance that inevitable rise in blood sugar. So you see here, there's actually changes within the genetic transcription level and within the tendons and within the collagen, there's a fat deposition there. There's also changes in the mineralization. So there can be more calcium deposition within the collagen matrix. And this is why it's important to take vitamin K with your vitamin D, because we want calcium to be deposited in the bones, not the soft tissue, not within the collagen. So it's not just the glycation, but the changes in the molecular environment as a result of the glycation lead to calcium deposition and also changes in uh, fat cell uh, infiltration within the joints as well. And then I think what's even the worst part about this is you see a reduction in type 1 and also type 2 collagen uh, peptide production and a reduction in the stem cells. And so this is, again, stem cell therapy is quite popular. It's quite hot. A lot of people are getting injections and, you know, all that. Well, you know, what if you could you know, sort of delay that, that medical need uh, by improving your diet, by just walking after meals? by consuming enough carbohydrates that are commensurate with your physical activity, by doing more weightlifting and having more muscle for the post-meal glucose to be deposited in, uh, doing high-intensity intervals instead of just steady-state exercise. So all these things are really important. Um, and I think having these, visual, these visuals help us to, to better understand this. Um, so really important stuff. So as we sort of finish up here, you're like, okay, I get it. Blood sugar elevations, persistent hyperglycemia is bad. It changes the structure and therefore the function of my hair, skin, nails, joints. So what do I do? How do I know if I'm at risk for having accelerated aging in my hair, skin, nails, or joints, or having a tendon rupture? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the hemoglobin A1C test is really nice because that's a direct measure of glycation, looking at your red blood cells. If your red blood cells are glycated, 
like if it looks like a duck, it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. So if your red blood cells are getting glycated and your hemoglobin A1C is over 5.5%, logic would suggest that your collagen could be glycated as well. So definitely, I recommend testing that. Again, we have a relationship with BioCoach. They've sponsored several of our podcasts. You can save using HIH10, links below. That's an at-home test kit that enables you to test and get a real-time assessment of your hemoglobin A1C. You get three different tests in, in that. Uh, great deal. Uh, also, we, we want to look at your triglycerides and your liver enzymes, as well as fasting insulin and fasting glucose. If those are elevated... Triglycerides, you know, over 80 range, something along those lines. And now triglycerides are a little tougher because it depends upon the amount of fat and carbohydrates in your last meal. But, you know, you want to get a general idea of what your fasting triglycerides look like as well as your fasting glucose and fasting insulin. Uh, and then we also look at the liver enzymes because as you start to be more metabolically unhealthy, fat starts to unfortunately get deposited in your heart, your pancreas, and also your liver. And so as that happens, your liver enzymes start to creep up over 30 and beyond. So it's quite common. Uh, so those are, again, that home hemoglobin A1C test and then your standard blood work that we talked about. All of that is on our website, highintensityhealth.com. And then what do you do? Well, it's not that carbs are bad. It's that the context in which carbohydrates are consumed and the type of carbs people are eating is usually problematic. You have people that are very sedentary, that have sedentary jobs, that don't exercise. They're eating pasta, bread, cookies, crackers, sodas, but that's bad, okay? So if you're really physically active and you have carbohydrates around exercise, probably not gonna cause you to have all of this post-meal hyperglycemia and advanced glycation end products. But if you're having bowls and bowls of rice and pasta and you're not exercising, you're not moving and not walking after meals, it's pro those, those carbs are probably not serving you. So it's a, it's a contextual specific sort of prescription with regards to car carbohydrates. Around exercise, when you're physically active, before you go hiking or walking the dog or paddle boarding this summer, um, have some fruit, no big deal. But you know, having uh, you know, soda and refined carbs are the problem. Um, another thing is obviously circadian rhythm health is really important for blood sugar control. So you wanna make sure that you're eating when the sun's out and try to have your last meal at the very least finish eating within two hours before going to bed. So that's important. And try to do a 10 to 15 minute walk after you eat. Really simple ways. Now, there's other things you can add in there. We've talked about this in the past. Taking berberine hydrochloride. This is a natural way to improve the gut hormones in these in cretins and change the microbiota in a favorable way, which has been shown to improve blood sugar health uh, as well and metabolic health. So all of these things are important. I take collagen. I take it in a post-workout shake. Uh, but again, I'm doing a lot of the other things right. So I, I would want you to... If you're investing in collagen supplements to also invest in healthy food and some of the other, you know, sort of non-nutritional interventions that I just mentioned, walking after meals, circadian rhythm health, eating, uh, you know, making sure you're not eating right before bed and all that. So friends, what did you think of this content? Did you find it helpful? If you did, let me know. Um, I will link this article here. The effects of diabetes on tendon structure and function is not limited to collagen cross-linking. Uh, I think it's really in interesting information. I think it's helpful because who doesn't want to age more gracefully and have less, you know, sort of noticeable you know, thinning of the hair and wrinkling and loss of mobility and strength and function and all of that. I, I know I want to age more gracefully and I'm sure you do as well. So thanks for sharing this video. Thank you for hitting that like button and we will catch you in a future episode down the road. Bye now.